today uh, uh, the uh, that is one uh, wherein we believe in having the scientific initiatives uh, which leads the uh, divisions so that's the reason we have this today's meeting on the scientific platform so uh, so uh, uh, introducing sir dr niraj uh, professor niraj uh, goel sir sir has uh, achieved a lot of achievements in these many years he has done more than 5500 major surgeries 6300 laser proctology surgeries he has developed more than 50 fully restorable hernia meshes he has trained more than 1500 surgeons from different countries maybe more than 20 he has uh, uh, demonstrated live workshops uh, on more than 125 in number in india as well as abroad sir has award, received lots of awards rewards he has been delivered talk, uh, he has delivered talk in the who as a invited speaker uh, that represented 11 southeastern uh, southeast asian nations he has been a uh, avid speaker in tedx wherein he spoke on gut clarity cricket in this uh, in the 20 uh, last year as well as he was also spoke in tedx uh, uh, on a very interesting subject of driving the blade mixing a positive cut he has been a, uh, one of the most uh, recognized as 10 most powerful leaders by india today and he is uh, received a entrepreneur award by times of india as well as, as an award by economic times as most influential leaders and sir has been recognized as a surgeon extraordinary in an article published in business today and he has conferred uh, with an award of a uh, guest of honor in the majestic journey of legends in entrepreneurs forum of india so this was brief about sir and without wasting much time i would hand over the session to sir to speak on the today's very interesting topic that is uh, fixing the unfixed issue with cyanoacrylate glue in hernia and uh, i would welcome again dr niraj goel sir to uh, and i hand over this stage to dr goel to uh, uh, start the proceeding over to you sir you you can start Sir, you are on mute. Yeah, so really nice of you, Dr. Sanjay and Team Samarth, uh, for uh, this lovely introduction and the opportunity uh, to share this experience on a very important aspect of hernia management, which is gradually evolving. And I'm fortunate that I started some time back and. i would like to hear from others i like to discuss my esteemed guests in this call uh, what they think think about their experiences and this this product so i hope my screen is visible there the presentation i mean to yes say. yes yes sir you are visible right. in the audience thank you so much thank you so much <clears throat> so we very well know as surgeons that objectives of a modern hernia surgery are that we provide a durable repair with low recurrence rate and reconstructing a functional dynamic abdominal wall beat any uh, hernia this is what we aim when we plan to manage a case of hernia it includes all the aspects of hernia management starting from the built an anatomy of an individual patient the site of hernia or it may be ventral hernia inguinal hernia midline hernia lateral hernia it doesn't matter the principles of hernia management remain the same we have to achieve a tension free hernia repair whether it is laparoscopic open robotic along with that we use some implant a mesh then we need to keep in mind what kind of mesh we need to use whether it is lightweight heavyweight it is if it is intraperitoneal then ipom composite mesh should be there we need to repair the defect if it is an inguinal hernia totally extraperitoneal or transabdominal preperitoneal so i don't want to go into these aspects today because we very well understand how we manage a hernia i assume all of us have been doing have been mentored or we are mentoring so many others in our hospitals in our institutes in our uh, areas on all these things so in addition to many aspects 
when we discuss like for example if we are we take totally extraparietal hernia inguinal hernia surgery as an example we have these kind of steps starting from positioning of the patient then we'll take care of the pneumo scrotum which may not develop in advance then we enter into the extraperitoneal space then we dissect the sac space creation mesh placement and then post op care so in the last part of this hernia management in any hernia surgery when we do the mesh placement after introducing the mesh in that space in that cavity wherever the hernia defect was and before that we have already taken care of all the part of sac management whether we reduced it excised it closed the defect we have done all this now we have introduced the mesh in that cavity whichever space was there in the body before closing we need to fix this mesh this is what is the topic for the day fixing the unfixed issues meaning what are the options that we have when we want to fix the mesh <clears throat> so there are four options in my mind which come when we talk about fixing a mesh one is we use a suture material and we fix the mesh with that whatever maybe the name that is transfacial suture fixation continuous suturing interrupted stitches intracorporeal suturing so suture is you one method of fixation fixing these meshes second is we have been having tackers different types of tacks absorbable non absorbable some coated uncoated the depth of penetration is different then we have in what manner we have to apply these tack tacks third method of fixation is no fixation of late we have been talking about do we really need to put these tacks or sutures necessarily in all the hernias so yes in few hernias like when we are doing in an extra peritoneal space and we can afford to take advantage of the anatomical planes in which we have placed this mesh after adequate dissection we can afford not to use any fixation any fixation device no suturing no tacking and we can leave it so if we have done it right the mesh should remain in that position it should not migrate it should not fold and the recurrence should not happen because that is the primary aim of hernia surgery that recurrence should not happen so after this third method that no fixation we need to think there are not all the hernias where this no fixation can work it can work only in places where we have the support of the planes the tissues but in all other hernias where the mesh if left without fixation will definitely lead to recurrence so we need either suture or a tacker for fixing this we know the effects side effects and challenges of these two methods for intracorporeal suturing or transfacial fi uh, fixation we so, need sorry, to be well versed uh, the slides are not moving if uh, it's on, yeah, it's on so the, the it's so, so oh, oh slides are not moving yeah they are not moving. okay screen is sharing yeah, now they are moving yeah oh there was some network issue i think so you can see the objectives of a ventral hernia uh, mental uh, modern hernia repair yeah 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 okay so i was talking about these are the objectives <clears throat> which yeah. we discussed and then we came to different types of hernia uh, is the classification of hernia slide, slide visible now yes yes okay okay <clears throat> there was some uh, thing glitch okay so this is what i was saying that we don't need to go into the details of these and now the steps of hernia surgery slide i'm showing so i can come to the most important aspect is that slide of n butyl cyanoacrylate yes, yes, yes. blue right yes, right yes. so so 
<clears throat> my dear seniors and colleagues in this call what we are trying to talk about or discuss is in addition to the suture fixation and the tack fixation we have this option of glue as a fixation option so this is chemically n butyl cyanoacrylate how does it work the tissue glue is a watery solution which is available in the ampules it hardens within 20 seconds when it comes in contact with blood or that tissue so this is the publication i will try if it works in the video my video is not working anyway so yeah where do we use this glue or cyanoacrylate preparation one is mesh fixation in laparoscopic surgery and other is gastric varices acute esophageal bleeding so these gastroenterologists endoscopists primarily use this for us it is in the extraoperatory space where we can use this as a substitute to tacks and sutures how do we use it it's available in the form of an ampule the liquid is there so an injector will simply be required to push like an injection like we do irrigation in the laparoscopic surgery or we do use some hemostatic preparation whether it is liquid or powder in the same manner this glue through an injector can be placed can be pushed after placing the mesh and this glue fixes the mesh to the tissue usually 1 ml is the dose recommended but here we are not gastroenterologist so we can just use it sufficient to make the mesh become reasonably adherent to the tissue these contraindications frankly are not so valid because where we are using they don't stand good these are standard recommendation that we should be cautious they are the glue is properly maintained when it is supplied to us storage at optimum temperature enough trials have been done on this <clears throat> from 13 to 15 these 170 patients study was done in vericial treatment they demonstrated the effect of the cyanoacrylate so immediate hemostasis was achieved in 91.4% patients so in addition to this important indication we have been using glue all over the world for fixing the mesh i would like to make it make this interaction a two way interaction by having questions from our audience about their experience or their questions about mesh fixation with a glue can we have the questions please so uh, requesting the delegates if they have any questions they can put it in the chat box or uh, if they can uh, uh, mm -hmm. i think yeah unmute themselves and uh, share your views on that yes the, the the reason is this topic seems very interesting for one simple reason is that meshes are something which came up after the sutures a uh, long time back when sutures sutures were used and then uh, still there was a lot of recurrences and lot of complications and all and then uh, 
based depending upon the different meshes, uh, the synthetic ones, the uh, biologic ones, and whether they are semi-absorbable or non-semi-absorbable. Based on that, you may have very various different questions because uh, yes. in the, each individual surgeons surgeon may have their own experiences about using different meshes. So, if at all any questions, you are pleased to share them. Yes. Yeah, because uh, see, tackers, as the tackers came, there are absorbable tackers and non absorbable tackers. For so many years, we did not have absorbable tackers. And yeah. I used to always wonder do is it justified? Is it fair to leave those kind of 25 or 30 or 15, whatever is the number of those non absorbable nails in the abdominal wall? Or if we are doing extra peritoneal surgery for inguinal hernia, we do use two tacks medially, one tack laterally. Now, gradually, lateral fixation, we have started leaving or giving up. So, non-absorbable tax, highly, highly uh, unjustified in my opinion. So, then, fortunately, we have got absorbable tax. Same with sutures. If we put suture, there are nerves which have the tendency of entrapment. And then patients have severe neuralgias after these surgeries. We very well know that even in laparoscopic surgery, patients have pain after almost for one week or two weeks initially, severe pain. And we keep on telling them it is because of the fixation of the mesh. Not because the mesh has been placed or dissection has been done. We tell them transfacial suture fixation or tackers, they impinge on the nerves and they are the source of pain. These are my yes, reasons sir. because of it. Yes, 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 yes definitely. So, sir, there is one, one question. Some I yeah, sure. Saw here. Sure. So, uh, the question was that as a, uh, you know, it's a, as a, this is a substitute. Is it a substitute for typically uh, sutured skin closure? That is a subcuticular suture uh, where uh, this has to be used. And in which type of surgeries uh, is it more commonly preferred? Is it the inguinal hernia or the femoral hernia? or the testicular surgery, or any other, wherever the meshes are required. Right, so, right. So, uh, first question, I start from the end. The last part of the question is in which hernia we can use it, where are the places where we can use it. So, what precaution or ba basic uh, thing we need to remember is, the glue should not come in contact with the viscera. This is what we need to make sure. Wherever we are doing an extra peritoneal planes, we can use this glue. This is what I have been doing. So it is totally extra peritoneal surgery for inguinal hernia. Very easily we can apply. In uh, ventral hernias, if we are doing extra peritoneally and we are completely in the plane outside the peritoneal cavity, uh, we don't need much fixation. But if at all we want to use, we can use it. Uh, whether it is inguinal or femoral, femoral, it doesn't matter. But if you feel that the hernia sac or the dissection or the uh, individual case findings are such where vessel is in close proximity or some other viscera is there, it is better not to use this glue directly there. So it doesn't matter which hernia. You can use it in any hernia. As far as the skin closure is concerned, it is uh, it has been used by some other manufacturers. But uh, some earth, whether it recommends this particular uh, salt to be used for skin, I may not be the best person to say because I have applied this for hernias. As far as cyanoacrylate is concerned, I do have used and it is uh, commercially available to be used on skin. We do use for skin closures this, uh, this glue. So, Dr. Sanjay, was there anything else in the question? Yeah, or yeah, would you yeah, like sir. to change or modify anything here? Not at all, sir. Actually, I, I wanted to go move on to the next question, you know, because okay, sure, uh, sure, the please. questions are pouring in. So, actually, okay, sure, it was sure, really sure. nice that you directly said that two way communication is always better. Will be better. Will be better. I have a lot of questions. So, uh, what, this nice. is Dr. Uh, Danesh Chikle. So, he says that can we fix mesh using the glue alone or you have to do something else also? Okay. So, it the confidence comes with the usage. Once you start using, you get used to it. I mean, uh, Everything requires certain uh, practical experience. If you can apply it properly and then just hold the mesh there for a few seconds, you don't need anything else. It, it is Yes, it is true that you cannot allow the mesh to immediately move uh, within a few, uh, I mean, three to five seconds. What I do is apply this and wait for a few seconds. It is six there. Then it's sufficient. So in uh, summary, what I am trying to say, no other fixation is required if you are using it properly. Only okay. glue is enough to do the fixation. 
So similar, similar question by Dr. Soumya Banerjee. So he is saying actually how, how has the glue to be applied or put into the mesh? Is there any specific method for that? Yes, or yes. Just as the, you described, just a injection, how you inject or irrigate. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, yeah. No, it is not irrigation. It is a specific, uh, special uh, applicator is available. So for laparoscopic surgery, we need that applicator. And we push, uh, put this liquid into the container, like just like injection. So uh, I, this is the reason I was giving the example of irrigation during laparoscopic surgery. How we do we irrigation? How, sometimes what we do is we install some hemostatic drugs or antibiotics or sometimes only normal saline in the peritoneal cavity, in liver bed or in operated area. In similar manner, we have these uh, applicators available which are where the syringe will be connected and we push the glue from outside and the drops will be delivered at the tip of that uh, applicator where the tip will be the tip of the applicator will be exactly where the mesh has to be fixed so it is not to be spread out in, in uh, infiltration manner we have to gently instill this exactly as drops in uh, through the mesh when it uh, passes the mesh and it, uh, it sticks to the tissue okay okay so, so there is another question uh, that has been asked now that you have demo you have been mentioning about uh, all these things uh, in open procedures. Now, is there a utility of uh, using cyanoacrylate in uh, laparoscopic procedures? Oh yes, I'm, yes, definitely. I am talking about primarily laparoscopic surgery. In open huh? surgery, usually we are more comfortable, more uh, habitual of using sutures. We don't use tax also for open surgery. So it is pri primarily laparoscopic surgeries where we need tackers. Otherwise, we have the access with the, uh, all the instruments and we do open fixation. It is okay. primarily for laparoscopic surgery where it is more useful. Okay. So now, uh, sir, a question from my side. So if we if we compare uh, the suture techniques vis a vis the glue, so yeah. how is the uh, uh, the how uh, how can we rate about uh, its uh, usage in the terms of risk of infection or a cosmetic outcomes or patient satisfaction or the cost cost wise as well so dr sanjay whenever we are doing mesh fixation whether we use uh, this uh, suture or tack challenges remain the same one is the procedure itself suturing requires certain expertise skill then Tacking also requires that, but tacking is a little simpler. Once we have done either suturing or tacking, after that, the risk of nerve entrapment is there due to which the patients of uh, all these hernia surgeries, they experience pain for a few days to few weeks. Not necessarily everybody, but there is a probability, possibility of this. Third, the non-absorbable part. If these tacks are non-absorbable, then of course, they are huge nuisance for the patient. So vis-a-vis -vis these two options versus glue where you have to simply drop the liquid there and it sticks that means those uh, possible complications of neuralgias are almost not there with glue okay. as far as cosmesis is concerned so because we are doing this inside the body somewhere directly cosmesis is not uh, the discussion uh, with any of the mesh fixation whether we use a uh, Suture, tacker, or the glue. Okay. So, sir, again, uh, uh, the question uh, which is expressed uh, is that in inguinal hernia, we usually take master stitch to the pubic tubercle. Now, will glue give the same level of strength and fixation, particularly for the master stitch? What no. are your views on that? Yes. Uh, so, as conventionally, we have been using this master stitch where not only from the pubic, uh, the tissue over the pubic bone or the ligament, we try to take it with the periosteum so that we have that kind of feel that we have completely fixed it and then we tie the knot, the mesh remains there very strongly. So, with the evolution of laparoscopic surgery, I remember in open appendicectomy, every teacher used to teach that stump of the appendix needs to be buried. Even before burying the stump of the appendix, they will ask us what antiseptic liquid, what chemical you use to touch the divided stump of the appendix. 
so carbolic acid or whatever was the recommendation they used to ask us and we used to tell in front of our eyes during last two decades or three decades we are seeing that all these things have disappeared in laparoscopic appendicectomy nobody talks about burying the stum leave aside touching with the stum necessarily with a antiseptic liquid so i am giving this example to explain conventionally we are habitual of doing something but when something new comes uh, these questions do come up to our mind because i have been using this so i can say that this sticks strongly enough that we don't need to do that kind of a bone fixation or a periosteum fixation so this sticks very nicely no problem at all of course a suture strength cannot be achieved with a glue but the requirement here in this inguinal hernia specifically which we are talking about fixation is not the strength it is the fixation we don't have to stick the mesh to the bone we are just using this because we we have been doing this so what i am trying to convey in essence is mesh fixation is very well achieved but just by glue we don't need to uh, necessarily need this as strongly as we do it with suture so there is, there is a question by dr k dipu kumar so uh, dr kumar is asking uh, suppose it happens we happen to spill over the glue on over the bowel then how has it to be managed uh, dr dipu uh, this is like uh, uh, an event during the surgery these are this is the kind of uh, intraoperative possible uh, complications so it's uh, like cautery touches the intestine what do we have to do so this is not recommended ideally it is not recommended it is uh, it will depend on the volume of the liquid that is spills onto the bowel loop it will depend which part of the bowel was is this whether it's small bowel large bowel how friable it was if it was it was pathological so ideally it it should not happen if it spills of course it's a chemical at a certain temperature it can injure the bowel it can even lead to perforation of the bowel so uh, now there is a question by dr navid ashraf so he is asking how many endocrine glues are used for hernia mesh surgery the quantity how one how many endocrine glues are used okay okay, okay okay so it depends on what size of hernia was there how many point fixation you want to do if a totally exceptional hernia we are talking about we use, we need to put this kind of a drop at least at four or five places right four or five places it will depend on the size of the defect how much fixation we are intending to do accordingly the quantity will be required so it is not definite that this much uh, one vol one uh, ampule or two ampules or this much milliliter of liquid is required it's it is depending on the surgeon how much fixation he wants to do or what, what i am trying to say once we start doing this we gradually realize <coughs> large volume is not required hardly one ampule or half an ampule is enough yeah. so now uh, the question asked now here is uh, how would be a combination of a glue and suture work in the surgery or it's it's just a glue or one goes with the glue or only traditionally as we go for the sutures so yeah. how would, would be a combination right 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 so uh, uh, i completely understand because uh, whatever we do when i started uh, using laser for in proctology or when laparoscopy came these kind of uh, you can say insecurities or curiosities are very natural uh, we don't trust anything except god without seeing this this is an old age saying similarly once we start using the glue then we realize the strength of the glue So I'll only say surgery. We very well know when we do this, then only we can have the confidence in this. When we apply this, if you feel you're getting a reasonable fixation, you'll not need to think about uh, fixation with the suture. But if you, for whatever reason, if the fluid is there, it is not the operative area is not very dry. It is so much uh, you can say uh, serous fluid or serous sanguineous fluid is lying there. Perhaps glue may not work. So adequate hemostasis. then uh, mesh directly in touch with the tissue we apply the glue it fixes so normally a suture will not be required but if you are doubtful then you can use a hybrid technique anywhere we do that hand assisted laparoscopic surgery some people do 
laser surgery with fixing with the suturing uh, in every uh, surgery whichever part of the body we talk hybrid techniques are popular till you gain confidence initially you can do that once you start gaining confidence you can completely leave it's like non absorbable sutures were the only sutures in the past then chromic catgut was there vicryl was never there so these vicryl pds kind of sutures when they came gradually the use of catgut has almost disappeared it has almost disappeared very old surgeons will still ask today give me a catgut similarly uh, uh, robotic surgery so any new advancement comes gradually the one who understand this start using this becomes habitual of this so with glue no suture is required but whenever in doubt do use a suture okay so dr alok kumar is asking can we fix the mesh over the triangle of pain during tp using the glue so <clears throat> uh, what's uh, your name i, I dr I alok kumar yeah dr alok triangle of pain uh, if we talk about fixing the mesh in tp or tapp the recommendation is the lateral fixation should be antero superior to the pu uh, ilio pubic tract and the triangle of pain is inferior posterior inferior to the ilio pubic tract it is strongly recommended not to do any fixation in the triangle of pain because this is the landmark described for this ilio pubic tract so every tack every suture or glue whatever we do should be done anterior to that or superior to that so that nerves are not entrapped the major nerve that you are talking about the triangle of pain glue although it is not as penetrating as a tack or a suture but still it's a glue so unless you feel very compelling reason that you need to apply this it's better that we do follow the basic uh, principles or the recommendation of surgery that we apply this in the same area where nerves are not there okay uh so uh, there's a question does uh, it uh... do we choose the glue over the suture based on the type of mesh or we can do it uh, for any type okay. of mesh? okay this is very very important and practical question because if a mesh is microporous or impervious perhaps the glue cannot be used directly i mean what i am trying to say the contact of the mesh with the tissue should be sufficient if you apply glue and if it is not sticking properly i mean the uh, contact time of the glue uh, the contact time of the mesh being in contact with glue with the tissue is not enough so if it is an impervious mesh perhaps it will be difficult for this contact to be maintained like you need to do some immobilization i'm trying to say so if a mesh is macroporous it is the best mesh for glue fixation if it is impervious it is the worst kind of mesh where a glue should be used if it is microporous still it's okay in a microporous mesh the area of the drop may be a little larger in a macroporous mesh relatively it will be a smaller area where it will be required yeah. so uh, one more question that is been asked is how does cyanoacrylate compare with other tissue adhesives like fibrin sealants or albumin based tissue adhesives or urethane based and all i think for fixation these uh, other chemicals have not been extensively used or been successful my experience only tells me no such fixation devices have been successful uh, whether we talk about any of these two or three in addition to sanacrylate so for mesh fixation i don't think they work they have their own indication in those places they can be used for hemostasis like they have used uh, such preparation more yeah so uh, this is what i feel that uh, the discussion on the mesh fixation with glue can continue uh, i would like to summarize this talk from my side about uh, with this kind of uh, very old saying which i feel are important to convey that basics of or principles of surgery or management of hernia remain the same we don't have to change anything only thing is we are trying to take advantage 
of this glue so that we can reduce the possible complications which were there with a suture fixation or a tax fixation. Okay. So, so, uh, so just let me, sir, again look at the questions if there are any or definitely, yeah, definitely. yeah or or else. So definitely. there was one question in the yeah. Yeah. So uh, again, Dr. Alok Kumar is asking, can we use glue to close very small skin incisions? Yeah. Cyanacrylate glue is used for skin incisions. It is used. It can be used. Okay. The only thing is we need to make sure that the uh, lot of fluid should not be there. It should be relatively dry edges. And then you apply this. It is also recommended that we don't put this in the deeper planes. It's more uh, useful when we do it in the cuticular or the subcuticular pain where we apply, after bringing the edges together, we apply this and keep it immobilized for a few seconds, apply the dressing. So I think, sir, uh, that was, you know, very interactive one, actually, in fact, I can say, uh, rather so, so a lot of questions are still pouring on, but yes, uh, definitely we'll uh, answer them and we can take them up as and when, but uh, okay. Uh, Again, Dr. Suhel Bhatt is asking, can patient take a shower of the surgery after this glue? Because, uh, and basically, uh, my, my question was that uh, since uh, the glue, uh, you know, it, it has to harden up and then uh, once it hardens, it's as good as a mesh, uh, uh, as good as a suture. So how long it takes to for the glue to harden up and uh, to have the tensile strength as that of a suture? Once you apply, yeah. So if we are talking about taking bath, that means we are assuming we are talking about the skin glue that we have used. Otherwise, yeah. for all other places, mesh fixation is inside the body. So uh, taking bath uh, is not a discussion when we are doing mesh fixation with glue. Yes, when we are applying this on the skin, we need at least initial forty-eight hours uh, that this glue remains dry. Although uh, the studies say that they it hardens and it dries up very fast. But practically, the tissues deeper to the skin. The, as I said, the glue is good for the superficial tissues uh, when we are talking about skin because it requires the skin edges to remain together. So that strength comes a little late. So initially for 48 hours, at least it should be kept dry. After that, it depends how long is the incision, how much uh, pressure will be there from inside the area that we, are, we can allow the movement or uh, bathing. Yeah. So I think, sir, that was a uh, very, very, very informative one. And I hope that we'll have similar such meetings. But, uh, you know, uh, now come uh, the time constraints doesn't allow us to have uh, more questions. But yes, definitely, it was a lot of learning experience for me as well. And I hope that uh, the similar, uh, the delegates who have attended this particular session should uh, have enlightened them on certain aspects of the surgery wherein they might be uh, wanting to use the glue but might have some inhibition or, or they already are using and that makes them very much now confident to use it more often so yes, yes, uh, so yes. with uh, so Dr. with Sanjay, this thank you so much yeah i also would like to just speak a few lines before closing sure. this is a uh, this is very new product for mesh fixation i have to tell this because i've been discussing with so many people and it happens gradually only Fortunately, laser uh, in proctology, fully resorbable mesh for hernia and this uh, mesh fixation with glue. These are areas where I've been getting the similar questions because they are new technologies. And I'm seeing in the last four to five years, the acceptance and the spread of these products. Everybody is great. As they are doing it, they're gaining confidence. The same is for glue also, Dr. Sanjay. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And thank you uh, very much, uh, everybody in the call. So thank you so much. So just let me end this uh, session by giving uh, a word of thanks to all of the people who have joined, starting from uh, Neeraj sir, who was who could find time to have this session for all of us, all the delegates who uh, could join us uh, during their busy Saturday practice. I hope the evening time would be their practice. And uh, that's how we crunched the time in between so that people can join. And of course, uh, my colleagues from the... Uh, uh, head office, uh, the Mr. Shantanu Banerjee, uh, Shishirji, Dhanashri, Bhagwati, uh, Anjana, and all the colleagues from the field who could make us uh, bring under this one common platform. So uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, uh, 
will keep on meeting interacting on such similar scientific platform so thank you all and uh, have a good day thank you bye bye